is a presentation of HBO Sports. Hello again, I'm Jim Lampley. Coming up September 17, HBO Pay-Per-View will take you live to Dallas, Texas for the battle between Canelo Alvarez and British 154-pound title holder Liam Smith. Alvarez going back down in weight from his previous perch at middleweight, looking for a 154-pound title. To get you ready for that, we're going to look back at Canelo Alvarez's most recent appearance in the ring. It took place May 7 in Las Vegas against British welterweight star Amir Khan, who was moving up two divisions in weight, hoping that his speed and skills would create a puzzle for the larger, stronger Alvarez. Let's take a look back to May 7 and see how that turned out and how I called the fight with Roy Jones and Max Kellerman. Okay, gentlemen, chunks are okay on both sides. Anything landing on the belt, I'll consider it low. Now, Saul, Amir, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to caution to keep this fight clean at all times, protect yourself at all times, and what I say, you must obey. Good luck to both of you. Touch them up in this fight. Day. The good big man usually beats the good little man, and sometimes they make a good fight. Amir Khan has not been in the ring for a prize fight in 344 days. 21 days short of a year. Will that affect him early, Roy? Yes, that will affect him early, but because he's such a speedy guy, it won't have the, the effect it has on normal guys because he's not looking to counter punch, he's looking to front run. Round one begins. First two punches are jabs from Khan. Doing a very smart thing, Jim. He's not completely running from Alvarez. <laughs> Hard right hand by Khan following the jab. And immediately, you see the hand speed advantage for Amir Khan. And that's what he had to do, Jim. He had to put something on him and let him know that he has to respect him right away. And right there, uh, uh, Canelo just missed the left hook. That he could have got Khan with, but he didn't throw it. Now he saw it. He saw how he saw the setup. He saw that he missed it. Then he tried to throw it a second time, but it was too late. Whenever you've seen little guys move up and beat big guys, they have to make a showing in that first round. They have to land something big. Ali versus Foreman. Roy Jones versus John Ruiz. They have to let the bigger guy know that they're in there with a real fighter. And Khan is trying to do that right now. Yeah, he did it right away with that straight right hand. Got in a left hook there. But the problem is now that he also has to prove that he can absorb one of Canelo's punches. Canelo is a measured, patient fighter. There's part of his bread and butter as he fires the right hand to the body and digs it in. Just missing with a right cross across the top. See, Khan's really got sizzling hand speed. And not bad power. Hard left hook by Alvarez in there. Khan took it well. He yeah, took that very well. But we see, when did he get caught with the hook? When he led. Canelo is a natural counterpuncher, wants the other guy to come to him. Crowd who's and ahs as again Canelo lands the left. Wasn't big. Khan once again flashing his hand speed in combination. Can't get too big for his own heart, Jim. He has to keep it basic and keep it smart. He can't go in and just attack like he's a big puncher. Well, so far, I think Khan's trainer, Virgil Hunter, is going to like this first round because his fighter has shown some aggression, has demonstrated his hand speed, and the one time he got caught with a left hook, he handled it well. Very well. Khan's movement. Critically important, can he do it for 12 rounds? That's the question. And can he move without running, not waste energy and give Canelo a head of steam? An excellent first round. And from a tactical standpoint, maybe you make Khan the winner because he did what he wanted to do. Tell me something. You see everything, huh? Big, big. 
Well, make sure you don't stop your feet, okay? Yeah. I told you you will not be able to deal with your speed. You just stay relaxed and keep it at them one, two, and keep it like you're doing. Okay, he telegraphs everything he does. You remember I told you when he walks in, if he's walking, he has to throw one punch when he's moving his feet. So don't set your feet, okay? You already got his right eye side puffed up. I don't know if you noticed it. Yeah. Keep your eyes on his hands, you know, those punches are gonna do it. Here's see Canelo faint and get caught by that hook, right hand, beautiful straight right hand, right on the face of Canelo, something that he's definitely not used to happening to him in the first round. And here's how visible it was, 27 nieces and nephews at ringside, and there's the response of one of them being comforted by the boy next to her and the girl to the right after she almost cries from a single right hand that Khan landed. Not used to seeing him get hit seeing Uncle Al Alvarez get caught with shots like that in round one. Khan trying to get away as Alvarez reaches with the right hand to the body. Canelo's obviously stepping up the pressure here in the second round. Moving closer. Trying to breathe on Amir. This forcing Amir to move on his feet. This is where Amir's movement has to be purposeful. Fights his way out of the corner with hand speed. Rather than excessive. Purposeful, and he also has to make uh, Canelo keep his hands or his defense on high alert. And make him pay for misses like that. Yeah, because it's another one-two that lands for Amir Khan. Canelo's going for broke, and we see that. That's how you know that Amir Khan hurt him with that shot or got his attention with that shot in the first round because he's trying to get it back already. Canelo landed a right hand to the body, missed with the left hook. Khan peppers him with jabs and gets picked up. I don't know if the danger for Khan is just those wild swings by Canelo. The danger is when Khan leads, comes to Canelo, or throws more than two punches at a time, and it gives Canelo the chance to counter. He should only pot shot Canelo until about the fifth or the sixth round. Don't give him that chance to punch between the second and third punch. A terrific fight so far in terms of tactic, speed, and skill. Very difficult for Amir Khan to stop himself from throwing three and four punch combinations if he lands. It may not be the best idea, but his punches flow like water when he's in the groove. Yeah, they do. said the whole thing will be can he move like this for 12 complete rounds well Khan's hand speed and foot speed advantages have shown up the question now is when or if Alvarez's power advantage will show up as well virtually every boxing expert who predicted the fight picked Alvarez to win by knockout. He seems pretty clearly to have lost the first two rounds on the scorecard. Without a doubt. Breathe. How are you feeling? Good? Take it in. Come on, you gotta pay attention because he's so fast and he comes in with his speed, okay? So you gotta be, get, gotta be careful there. If you're going in, you gotta be fast and after you fake, okay? Don't go in slowly because he can catch you because he's got the speed, okay? You gotta flex your waist and attack. Over his uh, left shoulder. If you want your left, over his right shoulder. Start, see if you start tapping that glove and stepping over on that angle, okay? Good job. Make sure you don't stop your feet, okay? Good job. You see everything and you relax. It's not even time. Well, not yet. Here we see Canelo finally catch Khan with a beautiful left hook. Looked down and came up, and Khan took that shot where they actually landed a little cross jab of his own back. 
Andre Ward grinning at ringside, looking for another fight prior to his meeting with Sergey Kovalev, scheduled in the fall. Andre is the master of the Virgil Hunter style, kind of consummate professional boxer. And no doubt pulling for his training mate Amir Khan here tonight. Harold Letterman agreeing with us, as you see, giving the first two rounds to the British star. That's not terribly surprising, given the speed advantage. Of course, he's a front runner, which is why I said that the layoff wouldn't hurt him much, because he's not looking to make shots off of counter shots. He's looking to be ahead. And, and Khan took that left hook very well from Canelo. He's landed three of them now. Canelo has landed three solid left hooks. He hasn't yet hurt Amir Khan with the punch. Gonna have to wear him down some before he hurts him, Jim. My prediction is he hurts him after he catches him in the body shot. In fact, if I were training Canelo Alvarez, I would tell him focus on the body for the first several rounds. That's what he should have did, but you know, different trainers have different philosophies. Good left hook by Khan. There's a sense because many Mexican greats of the past have been kind of seek and destroy, left hook to the body kind of fighters that Canelo should be that too. But that's not really his style. When he's doing it, he's trying to kind of imitate a style that's that's not completely natural for him. And guess what? Because that's not his style, that's why he couldn't give Floyd Mayweather the fight that we expected him to give Floyd. Because to give Floyd a fight, that's the fight he would have had to fight. He's already fallen, Canelo, into the kind of fight that Amir Khan wanted, where you pick your head up after a couple rounds, say, Canelo may be down in this fight. Does he have the kind of tactics to turn it around? Now you see Canelo doing something smart, though. He's even hitting Khan on the arms very hard. So Virgil yells, point, point. Either of you guys know what that means? Could be talking about the pivot, pointing with the left foot, point to the left, point to the right, keep him out of position, don't stand there, look at him, keep pointing to the left and pointing to the right. Therefore, you're not allowing him to set up a, uh, an attack straight ahead on you. This uh, was a pretty even round until Khan landed that one, too, right there. Looked like that right hand bothered Canelo from where I'm sitting. Hey! I make Khan the winner of the third round as well. Not crying anymore in the Canelo family section. Breathe. Sin desesperarse. Without despair, relax. Don't touch yourself when you throw. You don't load up, okay? You don't want to take him out with just one punch. Flex your waist, cut the exits. Fake to the body, fake up top. Okay, okay. All you have to do is stay focused. Every time he misses these big shots, it's wearing him down. Stay focused, okay? You all three already, okay? So you keep doing what you're doing, okay? As he starts slowing down, we're gonna do, okay? Now remember when you're along the ropes and he dot, keep the prevent out, okay? That lead hand and that angle, okay? Keep, keep that straight jab out like you're gonna hit him and everything, okay? Going to him, stop it. Reinvade. The beautiful new T-Mobile Arena on the Strip in Las Vegas. Very good crowd filling the arena tonight for Canelo Alvarez versus Amir Khan. I think I'm a little too enthusiastic about what Khan did in the last 30 seconds of round three. Overall, Harold Letterman sees it differently. Harold, what do you have so far? Look, he said, I get a 29-28, two rounds to one, Amir Khan. Jim, in the third round, I thought Canelo tracked him down. But, you know, he... he, he Tries to move forward slowly, land hard shots. That thought he did a rough and had a round three to win a round. I mean, he's obviously the more powerful guy. I thought, you know, he got inside. And Neil Khan didn't dominate him with that left jab like he did in rounds one and two. Canelo got to him. And, and I thought he got to him enough to win round three. Two to one, Amir Khan. 
Everyone loves the blood and guts, all-out action fights with two guys coming at each other. But this is of a type of a fight in boxing that's among the most dramatic. The smaller, faster fighter walking a tightrope against the bigger, stronger guy so far successfully. Classic boxer versus classic puncher. Oh, good right, right hand fight. on over the top. Good body shot by Alvarez in return. And that was the right counter punch for Alvarez. That was a devastating right to the body from Canelo. Left hand to the body by Canelo. Starting to get closer, which is giving him a better chance to land his body shots. You see Khan, unlike Erislandi Lara, who fought Canelo very tough and close, but ultimately lost the decision. Khan's movement is much more purposeful and less wasteful. He remains in position to counter like that when he avoids Canelo's shots. Alvarez getting his jab going, but he missed with the right hand, and Khan countered accurately in return. And Khan's quick hands are causing Alvarez a little bit of a problem right now. The question is, is Alvarez's power causing Khan a problem? How much is he feeling those punches to the body? That and uh, Alvarez is using a beautiful jab right now. Yes, he's landed his jab in this round. Reminding us of how Triple G came out and used his jab against uh, the kid we saw tonight. David Lemieux? Yes. Khan wound up in an exchange moments ago. That's the danger zone for him. A little bit wild. Maybe a few too many punches. Exposing him to that counter from Canelo. Now Canelo doing exactly what he needs to do. Now he's consistently on the hunt, keeping, it, keeping the pressure on Canelo, not allowing Canelo to rest. Doing a much better job of cutting off the ring here in the fourth than had been the case up to this point. This is the way you want to see him fight. A third of the way through the 12 round distance in Las Vegas. Good time, way to take that round off and still win. Breathe deep. Feeling good? Huh? Yeah. You got a lot of energy, huh? I know. Keep showing him those jabs, those, those faint jabs, you know, that slide of hand, right. making him think he's going to get it. You can bring your other shots off of it, OK? You see he's pulling away from you now? Why? Because yeah, he feels right. your thing. That's what he feels, OK? He's puffing up now. You see that? Here you see the classic power shot by Canelo, that beautiful right hard body shot right there. Hard punch to the body because he's the more powerful guy. But right here you see the quick guy step one jab, step off the counter, and one, two, three punches with that quick hand speed before Canelo can get back. Nadia Golovkin at ringside with his trainer, Abel Sanchez. Triple G is designated by the governing body which controls Canelo Alvarez's middleweight title belt as an absolute must mandatory challenger after this fight. Hard left hook for Alvarez lands upstairs. He had to reach a little bit, but he caught Khan with it. I thought Khan's legs wobbled a little bit from that punch. Just a little bit. So, so far, this fight has been the best version of what it seemed it could be. And Triple G, if he's hoping for a Canelo fight, at a certain point, I think is going to get a little bit nervous. Well, almost nobody has conjured the question of whether Amir Khan with his hand speed would pose a riddle for Triple G. That's just not something people have even thought about. But Khan does say that he would expect to fight Triple G if he wins the fight. Long way to go. Yeah, but Khan has that heart. Khan has a heart that he won't duck and dodge nobody. Any question about Khan's heart should have been erased when he won an Olympic silver medal at age 17 and then stuck around, rebuffing huge financial offers to become a pro so that he could get another chance to fight Mario Kindelan of Cuba, the man who beat him, and win the world championship from him the following year. That's heart. That's real heart. This, this seems to be a pivotal round to me strategically. Hard punch Canelo, by Canelo is able to land more of his big shots that seem to affect Khan, and yet Khan is also not letting the play get taken away from him. They're both fighting, it seems, as well as possible at the moment. 
Well, the thing for Canelo right now is he has to do what we want Khan not to do. We don't want Khan to throw three or four punches because he'll get caught between them. But Canelo has to throw three or four punches to land that third, fourth, or fifth punch. Here's the gradual undercurrent, which may ultimately decide the fight. Khan is throwing almost exclusively head punches, and he's outlanding Canelo to the head. But Canelo is piling up body punches. Coming into this round, he had landed 16 to only three for Khan. And as those numbers grow, those are like the hidden boats from out in the rural areas. Canelo is building up the body damage on Khan. But what Canelo can't do is try to stand back and box Khan like he's doing right now, because he won't beat Khan like this. <laughs> Good right to the body from Canelo. Khan has a redness around that right eye. May have a cut either on the nose or on the eye, or right up under the eye from that left hook earlier. Khan now forced to acknowledge those Canelo shots. He's having more and more difficulty getting away from Khan's pressure. As Khan does a better job of cutting off the ring. Or excuse me, Canelo. Canelo does a better job of cutting off the ring. That's the shot. See that third shot? Those are the ones that he has to land. And even though Khan won't let the play get taken away, it does feel like there's been a, a kind of sea change in this fifth round. What happened? You want some water? No, no. You good? See, you're starting to catch more now. Just like that. Let go of those punches. Be faster. Not so much power because you miss more. Flex your waist. Fix your flip and jab to the top and fake them to the body and then change it up. Change them up. Don't be overconfident, right? Ahí va, eh. I told you this would happen. Believe me the rest of the way. Okay? He's got to try it now. He knows he's behind. So he's looking for big punches. Remember to keep showing them sliding hands. Do not bring your hands in here and punch them here. Punch them down and where they are, okay? Showing tap, step in, bow, bow. Tap, bow, bow, okay? Here you see Canelo land a beautiful left hook, and it looked like our car may have been hurting, but it's just the way he is. His movement is so awkward right, right there. He bounces both feet up in the air at the same time, and he just does that. So I don't think he's really hurt. And here you see a beautiful body shot right to the body by Canelo. Those are the shots that Canelo has to land. Right hand to the body has been Canelo's best punch all night long. Khan has been landing his jab and sometimes his right hand across the top. But if there's a decisive punch in the flow of the fight so far, it would appear to be Canelo's right hand to the body. Canelo outlanding Khan 36 to 29 in the last three rounds. And as you see, he's won all of those rounds on Harold Letterman's scorecard. So at least on Harold's unofficial scorecard, Canelo Alvarez inching ahead in the fight. The longer it goes, the more ringside experts expect the damage to up in Canelo's favor. Larger, stronger man. Amir Khan fighting above the 147 pound level for the first time in his career. Canelo at his preferred weight of 155. Hard body chop with the right hand by Canelo. And now Canelo's outboxing Khan. Khan's attempts are, hit, are hitting air or gloves, and Canelo's attempts are landing clean. And that was that third punch that I was talking about. He threw a one, two, three, right hook to the body, left hook to the head, and the left hook and the right body shot landed. It's just been a simple matter of closing the distance, getting closer, cutting off the ring, creating less and less physical space between himself and Khan. And what a display of hand speed by Khan there. Exactly, because Canelo backs out now and gives him time. Tries to box like he did again with Floyd Mayweather. You can't box a boxer, you have to fight him. 
much harder to do against Floyd Mayweather than anybody else. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you should have learned that from Floyd, from the Floyd fight. And you definitely supposed to imply, impose your will on a guy like this. I think slowly he is. It seems that over the last several rounds, Canelo's having his way increasingly. Body shots. Yeah. Body shots. Jim and said. now the jab upstairs landing with frequency. Not just that the body shots score points. It's it's money in the bank. Uh, and and the, it, there's a cumulative effect that I think we're starting to see it. You sap a man's confidence with body shots, as well as taking away his energy. And every oh, oh right hand shot by Canelo. And Kenny Bayless is stopping the fight. And Canelo Alvarez is the first one there. Canelo Alvarez may have knocked Khan cold with that shot. He the, did. The danger from a shot like that is not only the punch on the chin that short-circuited Khan's legs, it's the fact that the back of his head smacks off the canvas, which is the cause for concern. A spectacular knockout. A Triple G kind of a knockout. A knockout that's going to wait one make the boxing world want to see Canelo Alvarez do that against Golovkin. And not to disregard the condition of Amir Khan at this moment because there's some cause for concern. But that was a really good fight. Very good right fight. Right up until the end. That was a fight in which both fighters showed their skills, their command, their commitment to the sport, their conditioning, their understanding of what to do. And it ended the way almost everybody thought it would end with a power shot by Canelo Alvarez. Khan is awake. Alvarez did his job. Let's take another look at how it happened, Roy. Yeah, you see Khan just sitting there, threw that jab, not ready. He gave him a feint. Khan was not ready for the feint. And the overhand right caught him because he had held him with the feints earlier. When you hold a guy, you feint him, he doesn't move. Next time you feint him, you go ahead with the kitchen sink. Right here. Feint the jab. He didn't want to hit the jab, just feint him to get close enough and close the door with the kitchen sink. And that's how you put a guy out. Very reminiscent of the feint and right hand combination that knocked out James Kirkland one year ago. Exactly. Same exact shot, just against a right hander instead of a left hander this time. Canelo knew that he had wrecked Khan with that shot, and he was immediately concerned about the condition of his opponent. Kenny Bayless will wave it off. Now watch Canelo come into the picture. On his knees. Great shot. And now let's take a look at the Alvarez family reaction at ringside. No more of that consternation that you saw in round one. Ecstasy as the knockout materializes before their eyes. Virgil Hunter with his fighter. Let's go to ring announcer Joe Martinez with the particulars on the knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. Two minutes, 37 seconds, round number six. Your winner by KO Victory and still WBC Ring Magazine Lineal Middleweight Champion of the World, Saron Canelo Alvarez. Final cup, you box numbers. Alvarez lands 16 more total punches, throws four more, lands at a higher connect percentage. A lot of that was because he was landing to the body. Amir Khan never even really tried. Power shots, and there's only one of the 42 that really mattered.
He lands 14 more. He throws five more. He lands at a 51% connect percentage. How many times have we told you if a guy lands 50% of his power shots, he's probably going to win the fight? Punch shown. Punch zone will show you where the punch is landed. And you can see that Amir Khan landed a total of five body shots. And Canelo landed his right hand to Amir's left side 25 times in the fight. He wore him down. He set him up. He used the brilliant feint with the left hand to freeze him. And he knocked him out with the right hand shot. Max Kellerman stands by with the middleweight champion of the world. Congratulations, Canelo. That was a terrific fight and a vicious knockout. Let's start at the beginning. Did he surprise you with his speed early? Desde un principio lo dije. Él es un peleador rápido que los primeros asaltos se me iba a complicar. Pero como le di, como lo dije también tengo la experiencia para poder descifrarlo. Y solamente estaba esperando el momento oportuno y fue lo que pasó. Like I said from the beginning, you know, he's a fast fighter, he's very fast, and I knew that things were going to be complicated at the beginning, but I knew that time would be would be to come to my favor, and I absolutely saw that. Time seemed to come to your favor, not only because you were bigger and stronger, but also because of your boxing skills. As the fight wore on, you seemed to be able to make him miss and counter more effectively. Can you talk about the skills that you showed in this fight? Así es, como lo dije, mucha gente, muchos peleadores se basan nomás en que tengo poder, pero tengo muchas más cosas arriba del cuadrilátero y es cuando lo ven, cuando ya están enfrente de mí. You know, you know, many people focus on my power and talk about my power, but I've got many more qualities in the ring, and people see that, and that's what happened in the ring. Me gusta sorprenderlos. I like to surprise everyone. Well, speaking of that, you seem much more comfortable with a fighter who comes at you than a fighter who runs away. Why is that? Claro que sí, siempre es más complicado un peleador que que boxea rápido, es más complicado, ¿no? Eh, un peleador que viene hacia el frente, que viene a pelear, se da una bonita pelea, se da una bonita pelea y y, y eso todo el mundo lo sabe, ¿no? Cualquier peleador se le dificulta un peleador así. You know, a boxer, someone that comes into box, it obviously gives you more trouble, obviously. But, you know, someone that comes to attack and comes to press you gives you the opportunity to have a very, very, very good, nice fight. But obviously, it's difficult with someone who boxes. There's a guy ringside watching this fight tonight who comes to attack. Triple G. Yo lo invité que subiera. I invited him to come to the ring. You invited him to the ring? Why? Yo lo invité que subiera. I Como decimos en México, hay que dejarnos de mamadas. No hay que... Los, cint los cinturones aquí se hacen a un lado. Hay que pelear por honor y por gloria nada más. I invite him into the ring. And like we say in Mexico, we don't fuck around. We don't, we, don't fight, we don't fight for rings and stuff like that. I don't fear anyone. En este deporte no se viene a jugar y no le tengo miedo a nadie. We don't come to play in this sport. I don't fear no one in this sport. Does that mean that you will fight Triple G later this year. Como lo dije en la pelea pasada, ahorita mismo me vuelvo a poner los guantes. As I said in the last fight, right now I'll put on the gloves again. Gracias, gracias a toda la gente. Viva México! Thank you, Canelo, congratulations. Let's go back to Max with Amir Khan. Amir, right up to the point that you got hit on the chin with that right hand, that was a terrific performance. What were you thinking as that fight wore on? Uh, first of all, I just want to say a big thank you to everyone. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm one of them fighters, you know, I'll step in the ring with whoever. And I think it's time now where Canelo needs to step in with Triple G because everyone's been waiting for that fight. So I showed my balls by getting in the ring and getting in the ring with a big guy. But look, I mean, this is boxing. I went to go out there as a champion. I was unfor unfortunately, um, I, I didn't make it to the end, but I tried my best, and I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who turned up here, and I want to say thank you for the support. Given how well you fought tonight against a much bigger, naturally, a naturally bigger guy, younger guy, you'd mentioned to us in the past that you need that kind of challenge to bring out the best in you. Are you going to go down in weight now, or are we going to see this Amir Khan at your natural weight? You know, I mean... I'm naturally a 147 fighter and this challenge came and it was very hard to turn down. I want to be the best, I want to fight the best, so that's the reason I took this fight. But look, I'll probably be going down. I mean, uh, my natural weight is 
147, I'll be probably going down to that. And he took the risk. He gave up everything. No concessions. Now it's time for him to take the risk and quit hiding behind little stuff, okay? Amir took the risk. Why is it important for you guys that Canelo takes that risk against Triple G? It seems personal. Because he set the tone. Amir set the tone. Fighters should fight each other. We're setting the tone. He took the risk. He did it. He got to quit hiding behind the flag and fight Triple G. We all hope to see that fight happen. Amir, it's always a pleasure to watch you fight. Jim? Roy Jones, it was a brilliant fight for as long as it lasted. Khan seemed to get off to a terrific start. How did Canelo reel him in and set up the knockout? Well, Canelo was being Canelo. He's a very patient counterpuncher. He knew that Khan was going to start early. Khan being the front runner, he started early, had his jab working. I uh, was doing good, good with punches to the head, but he threw no body shots. Why? Because he's a front runner. Front runners don't expect to throw body shots or worry about tying a guy out. Their job is to get the lead and hold on to it. With well, Canelo knowing that, constantly attacked Khan, hit his body, hit him with 25 shots on that left side to the body. All of those shots predominantly going to set up that overhand right to the head. So what happens? By the time Khan starts to tire and starts to look for that right hook to the body, Canelo changes it, bam, over the top to the head, down he goes. A vintage Canelo performance, a thrilling knockout win. He holds on to the lineal middleweight championship. Gennady Golovkin was at ringside. Max, what happens next? I don't see a way around a Triple G fight at this point. There's a momentum that's taken on a life of its own. I've never seen a vanquished opponent, in this case Amir Khan, and his trainer call out the guy who just beat them to fight another guy in the division. I've never even heard of it. But that's how the boxing world is feeling about this. And when you look at the DNA of the Canelo camp, Oscar De La Hoya, he didn't duck. When he got control of his own career, he fought everyone. Bernard Hopkins, he never ducked anyone. And Canelo is not the ducking type. He was emotional about the idea that he's ducking Triple G in the ring right after the fight. I think this fight can happen this year, and that's the fight the whole sports world at this point wants to see. It was a thrilling night. Thanks very much, Max. We'll see if there are further thrills in the future. Thank you for being with us.